We have to go live right now to Queen's Park where Ontario's new housing minister is speaking to, to reporters. Let's listen in. Further review of uh, the Greenbelt. A complete review of the Greenbelt, as you know. The Greenbelt uh, was scheduled to be reviewed by 2025. It's part of the legislation that was put in place at its creation. Uh, we will begin that review uh, very soon. I have spoken to my deputy minister yesterday and asked her to put in place a, uh, uh, a fulsome review of the Greenbelt to give me options for that review to ensure that it is a public, open and accountable process. Uh, and uh, I, uh, as I said, once I have uh, that, I will be uh, coming to you, but that review will start uh, very, very soon. Uh, and uh, uh, honestly, looking forward to that, uh, that process. At the same time, uh, as the Premier said yesterday, the review will include the 14 uh, uh, parcels of land that uh, are currently, that were removed from the green belts. We will include that in our review. But at the same time, I have spoken to the provincial facilitator uh, yesterday, Lance facilitator yesterday. I reiterated my commitment to ensuring that we get shovels in the ground, but also to ensuring uh, that uh, on the 14 sites that she continue her work, uh, but that uh, that work must include significant uh, community benefits. As we've said, that community benefits have to include uh, you know, roads, schools, uh, community centers, uh, hospitals, uh, and a protection of any natural heritage features within those sites. Once that work is completed, uh, and I've, uh, I'm hoping to have that work completed uh, by the end of the year, uh, we will make that public. Uh, we will ensure that you have access to what it is that we are considering on those sites, and that will then be fed into the full review of the Greenbelt. Uh, that will be underway by that point. Um, so I'm, uh, it, it's two levels of accountability, and I think it's very, very important it's, uh, uh, that we continue to do that. We want to, of course, continue our work on building 1.5 million homes, but we want to ensure the highest level of accountability on uh, those sites and on future sites. At the same time, uh, I will be moving to ensure that there are additional accountability measures uh, moving forward. So I've asked the department uh, to give me recommendations and, uh, and options to revise the ministerial zoning order policy. I want to be able to restrict uh, the transfer or sale uh, of lands and make this retroactive to 2018. I want to ensure that any lands uh, that have been uh, rezoned using a ministerial zoning order for the purpose of meeting our goals of building 1.5 million homes are used for that purpose. At the same time, and speaking with a number of our, our municipal partners, uh, I have uh, heard more than once, as I'm sure many of you have, uh, the need to look at a new policy uh, of a use it or lose it. Uh, we have heard far too often how the, the really the extraordinary good work that our, our municipal partners do in their time and resources that they spend in, sh in moving forward on development pro uh, proposals only to have developers sit on those allocations of water and sewage. Uh, and I want to have, uh, I'm working with my department and I've instructed them, as I said, to bring forward a use it or lose it policy. Uh, we, as the Premier has said, and all of us have, uh, have acknowledged, we are in a housing crisis. We have to put shovels in the ground, and we are re uh, relying on our, uh, our partners in the development industry to get those shovels in the ground faster. Um, so I will be looking at options on that. I will also be looking at further options uh, uh, for speculation and cancellation penalties that will be implemented through the fall economic statement. I also want to work with the, uh, the Minister of uh, Public and Business Service uh, Delivery to look at additional uh, consumer protections. Uh, I'm looking at options for increased uh, penalties for cancellation of purchase agreements and increased penalties for extortion of purchase agreement. And I also want to work with the Minister of Finance uh, to potentially increase the non-resident speculation tax. You know that we obviously already have the highest uh, uh, tax in Canada, but uh, we're looking to see if we can make that uh, uh, even, uh, even fairer. 
So these are a whole suite of, uh, of measures that, uh, that we are bringing in place to ensure not only the highest level of accountability in the process to, re, to, to build public trust, but at the same time to be able to live up to our commitment of building 1.5 million homes across the province of Ontario, working with our municipal, municipal partners to respect the work that they are doing and putting the development community on notice that bad actors will not be tolerated, that it is our intention to build is our intention to build homes for the people of the province of Ontario, all types of homes, and they will work with us. We will remove obstacles, but we will also remove those who do not want to live up uh, to the standard that we are setting. We expect shovels in the ground and we expect our partners to work with us to get that done. And with that, I'm uh, pleased to take any questions. Minister, Mr. Minister with the review, yep. uh, uh, not much has been said about what the actual parameters, the actual sure. criteria for this review will yeah. be. One review could be where can we build housing everywhere? Uh, we're in a crisis. One review might, be, one criteria might be let's look at the original goals of the Green Belt, the environmental sensitivity and all that. So we don't know much about that. And when you also haven't mentioned the 800 applications that the Premier mentioned yesterday several times, existing, many of them long-standing applications yeah. to remove that he said they'd all be looked at. So is this review actually a where else can we chop up the Green Belt review or what is it? Well, look, it's a, it's a mandatory review that had to take place, as we said, by 2025. Uh, I'm accelerating that to uh, uh, to begin almost immediately. I will, I am asked uh, the department to give me uh, a, a full suite of recommendations how that review can take place. As I said, it'll be a full, open and accountable uh, process. It will look at the entirety of the Green Belt. There may be lands that uh, need to be added to the Green Belt. There may be some uh, 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 some lands that, that are removed, but it will be a fair and open process that will uh, uh, live up to the spirit of, uh, of the original uh, uh, intent of the Greenbelt. It's conceivable that that review will say these 14 sites, some of them don't make the cut, uh, 100%. put it back in. Yeah, so and you're, I, you're committing now to Well, to I want to be clear, on, I want to be clear on this. So the provincial facilitator, I, I've given her a clear uh, uh, a mandate as to what I expect to happen with these, uh, these 14 sites. As I said, it's very, very clear. We're building communities. I expect significant community benefits on these lands. I expect the natural heritage, any natural heritage features on these lands to be protected. I will make that public, uh, uh, her work, I will make it public uh, uh, when it is completed and then I will feed that work into the review of the green belt uh, that will be uh, commenced uh, 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 so sooner rather than later. So the department says, look, the Duff and Rouge, Rouge lands should have been left as agriculture as they had been for decades. You're yeah. gonna, you, you would say, okay, I agree, I'll put them back in. Look, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna presuppose what the work of, uh, of the review is. I, I think uh, what's, uh, what's important is that we come up with a framework that is uh, open and accountable, uh, that respects the intention of, uh, of what we want to accomplish, both not only in building 1.5 million homes, uh, but also in, uh, in preserving our natural heritage. Minister, are yeah. you saying that even if there is some significant construction on these lands, and your review process then determines that these lands should have been in the green belts. What happens then? Would you stop construction and revert the lands? Yeah, back look, the, 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 yeah, no, no, good question. Look, the, the reality is that I, I exp I, I've asked the facilitator to complete her work uh, by the by the end of the year. Uh, at that point, I will certainly make uh, the results of, of her work uh, uh, public. Uh, shovels in the ground by 2025 uh, uh, is what my expectation is on those sites. But if they don't meet uh, the, uh, uh, the requirements under the Greenbelt Review as well, uh, as I said, the mandated Greenbelt Review, uh, then they will not proceed and we will remove those lands uh, from, uh, from the Greenbelt. At the same, at, uh, the same time, uh, uh, as we said, uh, on MZOs, on speculation, uh, 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 we will not hesitate to remove lands, uh, whether it's an MZO, uh, if they do not meet uh, our goals of uh, building 1.5 million homes, uh, we will take action on both on those developers and on the on the on the parcels of land. Can you tell us what kind of screens you have put in your office to ensure that no one in your office has any direct communications or contacts or receives any kind of USB keys or packages from? members of the development community. Is there a hard cinder block wall now between your office and de uh, developers? Look, Colin, uh, uh, the Premier was extraordinarily clear. Uh, to me what his expectations were. I also uh, 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 it, it took some time, as I'm sure all of you did, to, to read some of the recommendations in the Auditor General's report. Uh, and I will ensure, uh, by working with my deputy and, uh, and my team at uh, the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, that we have uh, a process that is public, that is open, uh, that uh, uh, is, uh, meets the highest of, uh, of, eth of ethical standards, that includes myself and my office. But are you implementing some kind of a wall? Sorry. So are you implementing any kind of 
wall here. Is there any instruction from you to your staff, you know, to not have any communications with developers? I mean, you're the deputy yeah. chief of staff, who's now the interim chief of yeah. staff, was named in this report, the yeah. integrity commissioner's report, as um, having dinner yeah. with, with those in the yeah. development community. How are you going to prevent that from happening? What policies are you putting in place? Look, uh, as I've said, uh, once I undertake the review of, uh, of the Greenbelt, we open up the review uh, of the Greenbelt, I've asked the department to give me recommendations on how that review should proceed. Uh, uh, and I will follow what the department has put in place at the same time, uh, I, uh, I will uh, obviously, as, as I expect everybody, uh, my colleagues and myself, reach out to the Integrity Commissioner to ensure the, 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 the highest of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of standards are met with, with myself and, uh, and my team. It's been the way I've governed myself and that's the way I'll continue to govern myself and, and have the exact same expectations of people that work with me. Well, instructions that you're giving to municipalities contradictory here because on the one hand I understand from mayors and local planning mm -hmm. officials that the province is negotiating community benefits mm -hmm. um, that they're still going forward with planning the urban boundary expansion some of which, which does go into land in the green belt and now you're also doing the review isn't that creating a greater degree of uncertainty for, for municipalities and a, and a lot more work for them to do down the line yeah no I think just uh, the op the the opposite uh, like the municipalities uh, uh, that are assisting us with the the, the provincial facility Facilitators work uh, uh, right now have been, uh, 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 you know, very cooperative with us. But we have heard that uh, if we are going to be uh, building 1.5 million homes across the province of Ontario, that we have to get this work underway. Look, we've done a lot of work in the lead up to this uh, with, uh, you know, transit-oriented communities, housing supply action plans every single year to move uh, uh, to move the obstacles to re to remove obstacles and uh, and and help us uh, facilitate our, our desire to build these 1.5 million homes by reviewing the green. Belt now, moving it up uh, uh, sooner, uh, it helps to uh, alleviate some of the pressures that might have been built up in the system. So I, I actually think it is it is the right time to do it, and we can uh, gather all of that information from our municipal partners at, uh, at the same time. Look, I think they all share the same goal. Uh, I, I don't think anybody has disagreed that we need to build homes uh, across the province of Ontario. I think we're all unified on that. My municipal partners uh, that I've talked to are, are unified when I'm out in my community. Uh, people are saying we need more homes. People are nervous uh, about it. But I, 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 I think we can do it in a way uh, that, uh, uh, that, is, uh, that rebuilds public trust in how we're doing it. But the ultimate goal is to build homes for people and we will work with our partners and we will get that done. But Minister, Minister, there's an overwhelming sense that people don't want building on the green belt. Your government is down in the polls. Uh, why not follow that 15th recommendation for the Auditor General that the Premier didn't mention yesterday and at least return these 14, 15 sites to the green belt now? Well, well to, to be clear, what we are doing is we are moving forward with uh, the provincial facilitator. I've asked her to continue her work that she has started, uh, and I will submit her work after making it public. I will submit her work to the Greenbelt Review that will be underway by the ministry. As I said, I've asked the ministry to undertake a, a, uh, 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 to give me options for how that review would take place. It should be open and public. Uh, and it should uh, uh, allow us to have uh, the, the highest uh, uh, accountability and public input as possible. So not only will that work continue with the provincial facilitator, but it will also then be submitted to the Greenbelt uh, uh, review that we are undertaking. Like to do a review of NZOs as well. Are yeah. you is the government committing right now to not issue any NZOs until that review is done? No, look, I want to have uh, a, a, a review. Uh, I want to make sure that the MZOs that we issue are for the purposes that we've established them to do. Okay, so when we issue an MZO, look, we, in long-term care, I've, I've asked for the minister to, when I was minister of long-term care, I asked for an MZO to help me build a long-term care home, uh, where I ran into obstacles with municipal partners who just didn't want a long-term care home for one reason or another. Uh, I have asked for a municipal zoning order so to help me on that way. So, so no, they are still an important tool, but when it comes to our progress to building 1.5 million homes. I think we are very clear to our partners in the development industry. When we issue an MZO, it is expected that that MZO is used to help us gain, uh, uh, make up ground on, on building those 1.5 million homes. That's what they're issued for, and that's what we expect our partners uh, to, to use them for. At the same time, I think equally important, I've heard it constantly, 
from our municipal partners how much work they put into this when they uh, when they take the the plans from uh, uh, from developers the allocations of sewer and water and then the developer does nothing with the permit and sits on that and then thereby restricting other developments down the line that is not acceptable to us uh, it is a waste of uh, of taxpayers money it's a waste of resources and does nothing to help us build 1.5 million homes so we are putting the development community on notice as well that I, we will be moving with a, a use it or lose it policy at the same time but we have a, we have a goal we want to build these homes we're going to build the homes uh, we will meet our targets and we will get the uh, make uh, make progress on this is it possible yeah. more lands could be opened up for development? Well, we've been listening to Ontario's new housing minister, Paul Calandra, speaking to reporters. He's talking about the Greenbelt Review that uh, was mentioned by the Premier and says it's going to be a public, open and accountable process and expects to see shovels in the ground from the developers who ha have purchased land. And uh, if they're not going to be um, using that land, he says it's either use it or lose it.